Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for coming here. It's very nice of us to be able to have a conversation about something that's very important to public health, yet a concern and a community concern. And when we talk about the public health community, we mean all of our partners, and many of them are here. So we thank you all for being here. My name is Martin Tremel, the Health Commissioner for Richmond Public Health. We've invited you to a little bit of a media approach and a media announcement of infant mortality. The issue of infant mortality has been very top in our public health message for more than a couple of years. We've identified infant mortality as a concern for Richland County, both on public health nursing experience and home visits, both in our WIC pro as well as our WIC program, as well as health education. We have a community health assessment and health improvement plan every three years under state law and federal law. And of course, our collaborative partners, many of you that are here recognize and appreciate the issues and concerns with infant mortality. Unfortunately, folks, this issue is not going away. Ohio still has an infant mortality rate that's among the highest in the nation, and the United States has an infant mortality rate higher than any country in the developed world and higher than most in undeveloped countries. So as a country, as a state, and as a community, we need to do a better job. And we feel that we encourage messaging, we feel that we collaborate, we feel that we have trained professionals in all of our colleagues and all of the agencies, but even with that, we're just missing opportunities. And because we're missing opportunities, unfortunately, babies pass away and die. And that's just not acceptable. And especially the disparity in our black community as a state and as a nation. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through a uh, handful of slides. We're not going to keep you very long, but we're going to go through a handful of slides. Many of you know this story. Again, we appreciate you being here. Many of you have reported on this story. Many of you have taken it to the next level and collaborated with community events, and we just couldn't be more appreciative. But we're going to revisit the topic because, number one, we can do better, but number two, we have some good news in a most recent collaboration. Um, and Ray, am I getting just enter? Yeah, okay. That one. Yeah. That one. Yeah. The other arrow key. So let's look at some data. 2017, almost a thousand of our babies didn't make it to have a first birthday. Ohio's rate is 7.2, and I'll reference you to, especially those of you in the media, for your media packets that has all of this plainly detailed. Black infants uh, dying at three times the rate of white infants. This is just not acceptable. And three major conclusions. Of course, there's prematurity. Uh, that's not the topic here. Congenital anomalies, sudden infant death syndrome but preventable risk factors. And what are we talking about with preventable? We mean safe sleeping environments, folks, and safe sleeping opportunities. And that's part of our conversation and opportunity. Here's the data for our county. We could be doing better. Our rate 6.7. We have a caveat in here. Because we have few births, that 6.7 is a moving target. If we were to have for example, 10 babies die or 11 or 12 or 4, it really skews the number because we don't have large numbers of live births. For a five-year period, we had 43 babies pass away, 2013 to 2017, and our infant mortality rate over those five years is 6.2. Here's the simple message that we're that we continue to use in the field. Here's the simple message that our partners and collaborators use that we want to revisit it and we're asking you to help us. ABC, 
these babies, according to the data we find, whether it's co-sleeping issues, meaning babies sleeping in bed with parents, on couch with parents, babies in an unsafe sleep envir environment, in a bed like the family bed with a bunch of pillows and comforters, in a crib with many, many things that shouldn't be in there. These babies need to be alone, they need to be on their back, and they need to be in a crib. And we're finding the crib is the opportunity here and the operative word. Many of these children are not going home with one and they have no access to one. So we feel that this opportunity of safe sleep and sleep survival is a key component of what we want to emphasize and I'll introduce to you Teresa Alt. Many of you know Teresa, she's the director of the Youth and Family Council for Richland County, members of Youth and Family Council team and governing board are here as well so I appreciate all of your attendance. But the council has identified this and I want to turn this over to Teresa for a little messaging on what their role has been in support. Thank you. So the Richland County Youth and Family Council is a collaborative organization of child and family serving agencies and our goal is to identify needs in the community and then work to address them collaboratively. Uh, so we have, uh, we use the community health assessment, we use our Shanner planning process, we use the community health improvement plan, and we identified this as one of the needs that we wanted to address through our pooled fund. So we, um, we already have a contract with the health department for newborn home visiting, which we find very valuable. We've done that for 10, 15, 20 years. Um, so that every child that's born in the county has access to a nurse home visit within the first month, couple months, if the family's willing and interested. And in that situation, they can receive education, they can receive the safe sleep um, survival kit. And what we really hope to achieve is one to, you know, having a newborn baby is very stressful. Uh, we hope to help parents, family members to have a little more confidence, to understand that a lot of these things are normal, this too will pass, and to use some of the tools that we can provide to them. So we try to make referrals whenever we can to the Help Me Grow um, Home Visiting or Help Me Grow Early Intervention Program, which is also something that the council um, oversees the early intervention. And I do have some information if anyone's interested about Help Me Grow. But it's one of the, another instance where we try to work collaboratively to identify needs and to address those and try to get to families with resources before there are issues that need to be addressed that could affect children later in life. Um, again, we have, uh, we have other ways of identifying needs uh, and we provide a, we have a request for proposal that we put out every six months so that we're looking for other agencies, other organizations in the community that might have services that would help our families if there's a need that's identified either through the health assessment or the improvement plan. So, why is that important? You see a dollar sign up there, and it's a significant amount of money, right? And what you see in front of you are the pack and plays. This is one right here, a crib at the pack and play. Of course, this is what they look like in a box, and then this is the information provided by public health in addition to uh, the pack and play itself. So $25,000, where's that going to go and what's it going to do? The, good, the great news is every penny of $25,000 is going to buy these pack and plays. And they're 80 some dollars each. So we're estimating we're going to be able to purchase in round numbers 300. And with 300 pack and plays, how far is that going to go? Well, in, conversation with, in conversations with the council, we have approximately 1,000 babies per year born in the county. We have approximately one out of two babies born in the county that are Medicaid or Medicaid eligible. So we have 500 babies-ish that are Medicaid eligible babies we're going to be able to provide pack and plays for 300 of these babies or we'll say half 
the good news is approximately more than half. And I guess if we run out, we'll take that opportunity should it come. But the good news is one out of two babies born in this county in, on Medicaid are going to be eligible for a pack and play. And it's going to be very simple. The process and the community collaboration and the partners are going to make this very simple for us to make these available. Here's our partner agencies and this is just a list as of today. The list will probably grow from others wanting to, to be participatory. Richland Public Health and some of our team members here and I want to thank them have done the heavy lifting in reaching out to some of these agencies and these agencies have said yes I want to sign on and I agree to provide this cribette and pack and play at my place of business and you see all of them there. Catholic Charities, Child Development at North Central, Domestic Violence Shelter, Dr. Gamaris, Richland Pregnancy, Third Street, Third Street's here. Uh, WIC offices here under the direction of Tina Pickman and Women's Care. So these are available. You'll be able to uh, they'll be able to secure these in groups of 10. They will be drop shipped directly to them and of course we're going to pay for that out of the funding. And it's very simple. Uh, it'd be a good thing if you were a pregnant mom, we think you'd need it. Uh, if you have a child under one year of age, we are requesting that you be a resident of this county for purposes of the appropriate level of funding that you're eligible for Medicaid and you have a card. And uh, we ask thoughtfully if you would just secure one of these per family so that we could make these go as far as possible. So the process is simple. The contact information is here for the public health team we have various folks to contact about information regarding the presentation today, information about rollout of the program. Of course, Janice Lochtefeld. Janice loves it when we promote her email, so we do send her a few today. And uh, Janice will be our point person here along with, of course, all of our public health nurses and our WIC team. The form is available up here in your packets as well. Very simple. It's a one page, sign the form, give us a copy of your card. Our partner collaborative agencies are just going to scan it and send it to us. That's all that the council has asked for the continuity and reporting purposes and families take a pack and play home. We couldn't be more happy and proud of the initiative. We couldn't be more pleased with being able to kick this off. We're thoughtful and thankful that Richland Public Health gets to be a large part of this, but really we want to be deferential and thoughtful to all of our partner agencies and especially to the council. So Teresa and all members of the council, thank you so much. This $25,000 is going to do some great things. And folks, one baby. You know, we're just one baby at a time for making a difference here. Nine's too many. And, uh, one's too many. So we appreciate you helping us get to a better place. And again, we appreciate everybody's thoughtful approach to this and all of you that do the heavy work and the heavy lifting with these families in their homes. And we have one more tool today in the toolbox, and that's this pack and play.